So I'm going to be talking about abusing Zephyr and Meta Zephyr and doing really bad things with them that make uh, BSP maintainers cry. Um, so who I am, my name's Eilish, both of you know me as Pidge. I've been a software developer for 30 years. Uh, first Linux installed with Slackware somewhere around 1994. And if you've known me around uh, the Octo Project world, I'm the Octo Project ambassador, and I also make cute embedded nonsense demos. So yay, uh, you've seen the Octo blimp uh, go out of control and veer into people, uh, the Octo portable DJ, which has gotten noise complaints, and the embedded hurdy-gurdy. Um, one of the things I'm less known for is I led the initial team that was responsible for the work on Meta Zephyr, which brought the ability to build, Meta Zephyr, or build Zephyr into the Okta project. Um, earlier last year, I got a new job, and I was asked to go revisit Meta Zephyr, and I did. Um, and I wasn't happy. Um, so this was through my work with the Anero project. And what we have basically is we have open embedded and meta Zephyr using 2.7 and we have like a co machine config in there and we have like eight machines and you know we want to use some Zephyr modules we're using machine overrides for that which is kind of silly and then we have not even the entire Zephyr we have part of Zephyr and we're just instead of using West we're going to use CMake um, and this worked in a way, um, but it wasn't, didn't make me happy. Um, so there were a few problems here. First problem is, is that all of the things that we use to, how we're using Zephyr is generally I check out Zephyr, I check out my Zephyr project and all that configuration sits in there. So why am I going to go and replicate that? up here in, in, in an in, inexact way. Um, so what I'm building, if I do a Zephyr West build, is not exactly what I'm building if I do a Yocta project build. The other thing, and this is where I really kind of hit this, is that um, we're hard coding what the Zephyr modules are by using machine overrides and passing those into minus D Zephyr modules to go tell CMake what we're actually doing with this. So if I add any of the Zephyr modules in my project, they're not known about. So I have to replicate that, that metadata both in my Zephyr project and in my meta Zephyr uh, uh, BB appends. So that didn't make me happy. And also there was an incomplete source URI. Uh, I ran into that trying to build something. I'm just like, why is this not finding this module? Well, we're not checking it out. And then there were only eight machines available uh, for Zephyr, and there's 390 machines. And my boss was like, oh, boy, it would be really nice if we got all those 390 machines. And I'm like, all right, I'll take a look at it. Oh, and then last, uh, just because I was being pedantic, uh, the Meta Zephyr layer was not Yocta Project compatible um, because it basically had BSP definitions mixed in together with the operating system. So if we go down through what the Meta Zephyr issues were, we're treating Zephyr projects as CMake projects, which they are, but really Zephyr, the canonical way to be building this is by using West. So maybe we should just use West. Meta Zephyr had no knowledge of Zephyr modules unless it was told. And we were using machine overrides for this, which was kind of sloppy and lazy, um, and putting this in the machine definition, which we really shouldn't be doing this. Um, Zephyr should really be taking care of this and we shouldn't be replicating this. Um, and if we wanted to do add extra, extra Zephyr modules, we could do that, which was great. And again, eight supported machines out of 300 plus Zephyr machines and how to support as many as possible. And then last, the layer structure wasn't technically Octo Project compatible. So let's go to the last one. Last one was easy. Uh, BSP layer should stand alone. So, we have Meta Zephyr, BSP, and then Meta Zephyr. 
Um, that was pretty straightforward. We just split those out. Then the other thing was, is that Zephyr should control as much of the compilation as possible, which is the premise I'm working on. Um, we shouldn't need to replicate all that metadata from Zephyr back up into the Okta project. No point in doing that. Um, I also wanted to get more machine support, which means we need to get a full Zephyr checkout. So we need to go and go through what all the source URI and the submodules are and get all that and get it into the uh, uh, Zephyr recipes. So let's get rid of machine overrides first. Um, I spent about a week trying to figure out the right way of doing this. Um, and I actually went down, well, let's read the kconfig of this and figure out what all modules are and do this. And then we can auto-generate machine overrides from the kconfig, and that was a really bad idea. Um, there's a lot of work to build and maintain. And again, we still have machine overrides doing what essentially shouldn't be something that it shouldn't be doing. And I started poking through the Zephyr code and I found module YAML. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And it references Zephyr module.py. And then it's pointing to West. And I'm like, I've been trying to avoid West. And the reason why is if you buy me a beer, I will go on and on and on and on and on about how I dislike one ring to rule them all tools. So like, if you wanna hear me kvetch about certain tools repo, um, why I dislike them, buy me a beer, I'll go on for about a half hour about it. And then I started looking at West and West is one of those one ring to rule them all tools. And I'm like, oh, I hate this, but it's actually, God, I'm gonna hate this, it's pretty good. Um, Wraps Git, CMake, all the manifests, uses plugin framework to extend. And then I was like, wait a second, West List gives us exactly what I need here. So I need to ensure that the checkout compiles with the West workspace, which was a little bit of a, a, a interesting thing that I had to do. I had to kind of munge that uh, wor workspace file, create a West native uh, uh, recipe and then create a, just do get Z mods where I West list and spit out all the Zephyr modules that Wes is aware of. And then just populate these Zephyr modules and then we can still do these Zephyr extra modules. So if I have an extra module sitting in my uh, source URI that is not necessarily there, I can still pop that in. We can pass that all in. Excellent, machine overrides, go on. So now let's go get 200 and some odd machines into Zephyr. Um, this stumped me for a bit. Um, I was poking around Zephyr going, okay, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna take all these board definitions and make Yocto project machine definitions out of them? And I was looking at the make file exports and I'm like, let's abuse this. Um, let's say that, so the, the Zephyr project has this ability to export make files based on what you're building. And I'm like, wait a second, I could just do this. I could just go and for West boards do blah, 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 and spit out as many Zephyr machines as possible. And I did. Um, so out of the 395 Zephyr machines, I got 230, or 323 of them generating mostly correct with the correct tool chain and all that. And 291 of them will actually build. This is great. My boss was ecstatic. He's like, yes, we have all these extra machines. And if you want to see a BSP maintainer cry, post 291 recipes to the Yocto Project mailing list and watch John Mason's vein in his head start twitching. Um, because, yeah, this solved my problem. My problem was solved. John Mason and other BSB maintainers were not happy. Um, they were like, hey, wait a second. We have our own BSP for this. Um, and our BSPs are tested. And we have actually the hardware. Do you have 291 boards sitting on your shelf at home? No, I do not. So 
this fixed my problem. It didn't fix John's. Um, John was very unhappy, and you can see that on the mailing list if you want to go back through the history there. Um, so the uh, uh, solution here was to create a little recipe called generate uh, machine configs and just leave that there. If folks want to do that, they're more than welcome to. Um, but not put those 291 machine definitions into the actual layer. Um, so this fixed my problem. Does it fix everyone else's? And this is the thing that we have to ask ourselves when we do things, especially when we do things we're stomping on BSP layers um, because the BSP vendors get very cranky about that, rightfully so. Um, and when I was working on this, not all the machines made sense. POSIX didn't really make a lot of sense to be able to do this, didn't really need to do this. So post stack changes. Um, we still have open embedded. We've now split uh, Meta Zephyr BSP into its own layer, and we have the machine comps, which is great. We also have a recipe called Generate Zephyr Machines. We can generate all the machines that we could possibly get out of it. So somewhere around 291 additional machines. And we've now reduced the metadata replication. We don't need to, we can rely on what's in Zephyr to actually be able to pass that information on up the stack. In Zephyr Core, we have Zephyr BB class that's now using West, compiling using West, not using CMake directly. Um, the Zephyr kernel recipes now have the full source URI, which is great. So, and the Zephyr modules are now um, automatically generated by using West list and a really nasty awk. So this is the status of where we're at now. Um, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, I'm the LTS maintainer, so it made me ecstatic when I saw version 2.7 there. So thank you very much. Uh, but um, for Zephyr, I should say. Yes. But uh, of course, I mean, it's been years since I've used Octo, unfortunately, because now yeah. I live in firmware. But uh, presumably, uh, you've versioned this too, right? So people can choose the 2.7 LTS or 3.2 or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 okay. they can. I, I believe 3.1 is currently yeah. in Meta Zephyr, and I think... Two is almost, it's on yeah, the Yeah, two, two isn't there yet, but um, I think that's the plan. Awesome. Last I heard. Yeah. Um, awesome, thank you. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think 2.7 is still there. Um, 2.6 they deprecated at some point, and now it's yeah. like 3, 3.0, 3 and 3.1 or something like that. So, yeah. But that was there, that was already there before uh, Pitch Start wrote the book. Yeah. Um, come on, questions. This is interactive. Yeah, yell at me for, for annoying John uh, Mason. So, um, Michael here. Um, so, uh, one of the, I think, stresses in many, um, well, many OS projects is, um, do we, can we actually test all, all the things that we're, we're, we can build? And then the question becomes, should we bother pretending that we can build things that we can't test? And is it better to let them rot uh, and, and knowingly not build, then say, oh, I built this thing, but I, I, it probably doesn't work. Right. Right? Like, w what's better? And then you said there's, there's, that vendors have BSPs, which what, they're not contributing to Yocto, to the, to the Oniro project? No, 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 no. So, so um, there's the meta arm layer, which those BSPs are tested with meta effort specifically. So what I ended up doing was basically stomping their machines um, by generating uh, uh, ARM-specific machines from what's in Zephyr and dropping them into Meta Zephyr, which made people unhappy, rightfully so, in my opinion. Um, I was thinking about my problem solved and not John's problem that I created. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, have you turned on the SPDX generation for this system and looked at the outcomes of the um, SBOMS outcomes from this? Have I? Yeah. No. Can you? Can I? Yeah, sure. Okay, because I'd like to compare and contrast it with what comes out of West SPDX too. Yeah. yeah I yeah, think yeah, it'd be yeah. fun. Thanks. Cool. 
So I, I wanted to follow up on the testing problem it, here. Yeah. Uh, that, that there's something that, that you said that you, you don't have this 400 bolts uh, on, on your desk. And the problem, actually, we did address exactly that yes. with Zephyr. Uh, we have, we built uh, something, if you Google uh, Zephyr dashboard, uh, okay. we run more than 400 bots right now that are uh, in Zephyr, generate like hardware description by basically parsing device trees in, in Zephyr uh, and run them in emulated environment. It's not like 400 bots on a, uh, somewhere, but the results are published uh, in, uh, on a web page. So we can basically go there, check uh, what demos actually built, which demos work. So, so we test like Hello World, Philosophers, Shell, MicroPython, and TensorFlow Lite module. So uh, it's probably it could be somehow yeah. adapted to test. Uh, no, that would be uh, interesting. We, uh, after the meeting, we can, I mean, after no, the, no, no, no. Uh, the talk. Yeah, it, it, and I think that it, the generate Zephyr machines uh, recipe is interesting because it, 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 it takes what we're exactly building in Zephyr and brings it up because if we're using meta arm, we're using a kind of a different BSP configuration. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily testing what we're doing within Zephyr. So I, I think it kind of takes a, it, it depends on where you're coming from on this. If I'm producing product that I want arm to support, then using meta arm is a smart thing to do. If I want to test just what's in meta, what's in Zephyr, then using the generate machine configs is probably a smart thing to do. Um, but it, 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 it's, you know, six one way, half dozen in the other, in my opinion. I mean, one of the, one of the reasons your boss gave to this request was like to make sure that, um, if you have partners or something that come in, they want to get kickstarted with something easily instead of just. Yeah. I mean, you can always go and work with the meta arm guys to figure that all out and stuff like that and have maybe the best tuning. Uh, but if you just want to get started, it's really like convenient to have yeah. that. Yeah. And also yeah. like very interesting to, I mean, you're not going ahead and saying we will test all of these things in on Euro or something that's not going to happen. We are not going to maintain all of that. So that's why we are settled for having like a, just a receipt to actually generate them. So I yeah. think that's like a good middle ground here. And then if you really want to build build a project or a product out of it, then you might even tune the machines later on anyway, or switch to a different layer or whatever. I think there's uh, just about five minutes left, so I didn't want to derail sure. from your slides. No, 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 no. Well, there's not many slides left, okay. so it, like, like this is this is a, this is one of those talks that's more interactive, <laughs> and uh, there, it, you know, it, it it the the moral of this story is. Um, just because it solves my problem doesn't mean that I haven't created a whole bunch of problems for other people, but you know, that's kind of, uh, the beautiful thing about this. I think we have a few minutes for your Glove demo. Oh, if you want really? to do that. All right. I think we have so, that. So, so, so if, if you end up going to OSS, uh, hopefully Linux foundation gives me another, uh, warning about sound, uh, Hold on here. Uh, this is only part of the demo. This is actually a Zephyr uh, Bluetooth MIDI uh, or Bluetooth Low Energy over MIDI. Um, here's a little MIDI keyboard here. And hold on, let's actually get something other than, uh, let's do power synth. Now this one's dead. All right. So yeah, there's a, uh, there's a, um, I don't know if folks have seen DJ in the box. DJ in the box used to be about yay big. Uh, DJ in the box is now about yay big with a glove. Uh, so yes, this is my cute embedded nonsense demos. Built with Yocto or? Uh, built with uh, a Nero project. So this is Zephyr and the base station is Yocto project based. So, or, or as, Joseph said, and I'm going to get him on this, Yocto Linux based. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, any more questions? Perfect. Okay, that's good. So thanks who, a lot. Who, who wants chocolate? Chocolate? All right, there you go. <laughs> You're taking all the time. Thanks a lot, Pitch. All right, John Bob. <laughs>